Good morning. So, I'm in the truck. <laughs> we couldn't take you with me when I got started because it was at 4.30 this morning. So, I am on a mission. Uh, going to rescue a couple of animals. And I say rescue lately. Um, uh, I don't know how much to tell you. I don't know if I should make it a surprise. Or if I should just tell you, probably in the uh, <laughs> title of this video. So, we're headed to pick up uh, a couple of my old llamas. Um, they have uh, been with uh, where they're at now for six years. And uh, I got a phone call the other day and uh, was chatting with their uh, new owner and she said that she was interested in getting giving them back because they uh, are no longer needed on the farm she had um, so she had a whole she had a big goat herd and um, I was going through a situation where I was selling one farm and moving to Idaho and I knew that that was gonna happen and uh, because of some life changes, needed to seriously downsize my herd. And uh, I have missed these girls. I love my llamas. And I'm very, very excited about getting the opportunity to get them back. So uh, we are headed over to uh, Eastern Washington. It's about, um, about a five hour drive because I am going to pick up some helpers who are gonna help me get these girls loaded because they have not been handled. They are not um, super domesticated. <laughs> they weren't when I got them. I picked them up um, and they've been living on a 100 acre ranch and for five years, had never been sheared, had never been hand, really handled at all. Um, that being said, these girls have great temperaments, and I'm hoping we have no llama drama loading them in the trailer, <laughs> because that will be fun. But uh, I will bring you back when I pick up my crew and uh, introduce you to them, and then when we get to uh, OMAC and uh, hopefully I brought the GoPro so we can record the loading and hopefully it all goes well. So, wish us luck. Okay, so I totally picked up my crew. Here they are. Hi, I'm Jennifer. <laughs> I'm Kira, we all know me. And that's Olivia. She's our giant ray of sunshine. Our moody teenager. And we <laughs> always have to have one of those and she yes. is ours. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, we made it. Funny story. <laughs> Not so funny. Not funny. <laughs> so BarkBox sent my dogs new treats and apparently it gave them diarrhea and they pooped all over Jen. <laughs> literally. <laughs> like, like literally we were on the side of the road cleaning poop off of Jennifer. This is not the shirt I was wearing when we said hello. <laughs> yeah, but we made it. <laughs> And these are the two girls that we're getting. Uh, Allegra is the one showing us her butt. She's actually the nice one of the two. And Gracie is the white-faced one, and she's a leader. Very strong, independent woman. <laughs> That's a nice way to say it. <laughs> uh, so we are going to attempt to get these guys loaded into the horse trailer um, without getting spit on or kicked. They have not been handled much at all the last six years. Um, we will address shearing them and trimming their feet and all of those things um, once we get them to Jennifer's house next week. I will go over and we'll do shearing. So come back for that. That should be fun. 
Um, and then I'll get wool to spin eventually. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the thing about um, llamas is uh, you only shear them every other year and their fiber is fire resistant and has an extremely high um, insulation rating. So this yucky wool, uh, I'm probably gonna use for insulation in my tree house. So yeah, um, but we're just gonna kind of slowly move them into this area. I'm gonna set you guys up in a spot where I think you'll be able to watch as much as possible, but I did not bring the body harness, so you don't get that view. Hey guys, meet Gracie. She did really well. Now we're gonna get her into the trailer. A little worried about Allegra's condition. Um, we're gonna have to get her fiber off pretty quick. Um, she's holding her head down really low. We're gonna do a worming. Come on, Gracie. Wanna get in the trailer? Come on. Step closer. Kira, can you pat her butt? Yeah. Come on. Well, he's gonna sniff it for you. Come on. Come on. Good. Up. 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 Good girl. Good girl. Good girl, Gracie. Do we have enough room in there? Okay, we need the second halter and lead rope. Sorry, Gracie.
her from behind. Come on, Micah. Come on, girl. Come on, hop. Oh, her legs will do it. Come on. Come on, step up. Come on, girlie. I wonder if she can step her legs up. Just no, that's too much. Let's try to see if she can do it on her own. Just touch her hiney. Good girl. Good girl. Good girl. Go ahead and close the door. Good girl. Good girls. Okay, you guys. This is Allegra. And she does not look good. She should not be holding her head down that low. Their fiber looks really pretty awful. Um, I do have warmer for them, so we will be warming them. But I might actually just go buy some ivermectin. Um, but they loaded up way better than I thought they would. They remembered some of their initial training um, to put their nose in their halters. So llamas are very smart and are actually take well to training. They just like kindness. So I'm not going to leave the lead ropes on them while they're in, but I am going to leave the halters. There we go. There's Miss Gracie. And there's Miss Allegra. Okay, girls, I'm going to squeeze out. Okay? You going to let me out? Yeah, it's all right, darling. Easy. Easy, girlies. Okay, I'm squeezing out. Okay, Gracie, you have to let me out. I'm the driver. Good girls. Okay, so we got the girls home and their condition is worse than we originally thought. Um, as I put my hand on the hip bones, I can, on the hips, I can actually just feel her entire spine and her hip bones. So we're gonna have to be extremely careful while shearing. I'm gonna go ahead and try to get this, this fiber off these guys so that we can do a better assessment. Um, yeah, so that's basically where we are. I'm just gonna set you guys to watch and we're gonna try and, try and get these guys sheared. Jenna's is officially sorry that her barn is dirty. My barn is dirty. I haven't cleaned it for the spring, so and I'm a poor housekeeper. And and this was um, a rescue mission. We weren't ready for it. <laughs>
fiber is so long that I'm just trying, I, I, I don't know where her body's at, so I'm just trying to cut as close but as far so that I can actually find her body. I think something's wrong with her front knees. Is just keeping it flat mm -hmm. on the body which if you keep your hand on the animal that'll help mm -hmm. she's doing amazing so this right here this is skinny this is uh, uh this is skinny they probably need 100 pounds she need, probably needs about 100 pounds put on her so is it normal to have this high yes punch like yeah. this okay yeah so normally when you're shearing and this is the vent, so it's the vent so the air can get in here and cool them. Mm -hmm. So that's why that's up so high. So it's a vent for ventilation yes. versus a vent like on a bird. Correct. And this is um, way malnourished here, and uh, she should have a lot more weight here. Well, a lot more weight all over, mm -hmm. but... But this should not be sunken like it is here. No. Okay. Mm -hmm. Sorry, baby. It's um, not a good way to introduce myself. I know. She's strong. She's With strong. Stinky though. mouth. Stinky, stinky mouth. Sure. Oh, her gums are pretty black. Huh. She's missing a tooth here in the front. Hmm. Yeah, <laughs> looking at your teeth. And um, Gracie's like much, much smaller. Um, Gracie's got nice big teeth. 
Mm-hmm. Um, they oh, could. She's been showing them to me like she wants to. Well, she, her they uh, hers no. always stick I know. out. I know. She's 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 the thug life. Right. She doesn't <laughs> oh, like Gracie, me. Either. She's blaming all this on me because she knows fault? you. Yeah. yeah. For eating. Probably. I'm not seeing anything obvious. Right. I, it's possibly could just be she's full of worms, and we'll get, we'll get them worm. I'm gonna unplug you here to move it. Okay. Well, it just unplugged itself. So <laughs> I decided that was a good idea. I mean, she's she's got to feel better. She just stood there and let that happen. So mm-hmm. let's hope this one does it too. They have not had their feet clipped in six years. Um, they have not been sheared in six years. So. Ugh. So her hips are extremely protruding. Um, yeah, she's got some scratches, but that's kind of normal um, for them to get little scratches. But this one possibly was a little puncture wound. But it's healing. It looks fine. It's scabbed over. Okay, it appears like she has uh, an abscess or something right here. It's um, uh, very swishy. I think that's a technical term. No, it's not. Okay. Our EMT says it's not. Paramedic. Uh, our paramedic says it's not. <laughs> um, her hips are worse, showing worse than Allegra's. Um, her uh, tail area here, um, the buttocks, whatever we're calling this part is extremely bony, um, very malnourished. You know, so part of it is, you know, we expect, we're just coming out of winter. And I do want to say this because if we're not feeding good enough hay, they're not getting the nutrition. Um, the lady said that her cows were running the alpaca, uh, the llamas off of the feed. Um, Apparently that's been happening for quite a while because they're very uh, thin. Um, so she's, I don't, I don't know what this is about. Now it feels a little bit tighter, but it's. I wonder if it's just like a, like a cyst or something. Could be, because yeah. if it's kind of floating a little bit independently, it's. Mm-hmm. I mean, I don't see any sort of a, a head or a wound, mm-hmm. um, so it might just be a little cyst or something. Okay. Okay, back to it. But I don't know skin very well. That's not my thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, we're going to have to...
her um, tail bones are so protruding that I almost can't shear this area. Okay guys, I'm a little low on battery. Everybody got sheared. Um, Allegra's getting a massage. <laughs> um, she's, she's got something going on with her neck. The muscles extremely tight. And, um, no, oh, it's not. It's extremely tight. It looks like possibly, um, she maybe got kicked by a cow or something because that neck is extremely tight and, uh, she can't really lift it up. But she doesn't seem to react to this like it hurts. Yeah, she's, she's acting like she likes it. She did let me clip her toenails. This is what Gracie thought of the Manny Petty time. She's not getting up. She spit air at me. There was no junk in it, just air. To just warn me and let me know that she was pretty much done with my shenanigans. Um, we did give them their shots and we wormed them. I'm going to come back on Tuesday and apparently try to do to Gracie's toenails on Tuesday. And... Um, you know, just do a checkup and then we're going to give cow shots. Is that what we're doing? I think we're giving yeah. cow shots. <laughs> yep. So uh, these girls are going to stay here. I'm super grateful to my friend for loaning a barn. And, and she might end up having a new llama friend. <laughs> but the massages will not continue. <laughs> uh, we are probably going to have to be having the vet out to look at them. We'll see how they're doing on Tuesday. Um uh, basically because of her neck. That's the thing that I'm most concerned about right now. Um, at this point, it looks like uh, lots of food, lots of good food, put some weight on them, um, and just let the wormer do its job kind of thing. So this was not really what I had planned on. I thought we were just picking these guys up and they were going to be fine. And... Um, I think I'm going to gather my thoughts and come back to you guys a little bit later, uh, maybe tomorrow, and finish this video uh, because I want to make sure that I say things right. So, uh, this is loosening. It is loosening on the neck. So, it, it, maybe she just needs a masseuse. All right, guys, I will come back with you tomorrow. Okay guys, I um, brought you out to this beautiful view to uh, give you my thoughts about uh, the llama rescue that we did yesterday. It was extremely emotional. Um, and the reason why, one, when you see animals that are um, starving, it's definitely emotional, but uh, these llamas used to be my llamas. Uh, I purchased them. Um, how many years ago was it? I think it was in 2014. Um, from a farm that had had them uh, out in a 100 acre pasture and really hadn't handled them at all. And, and I got them and they hadn't been sheared, they hadn't been handled, they hadn't had any of those things done. Uh, but they were in good health at that time. And uh, I bought them, brought them to my property, sheared them, cleaned them up, did a little bit of training with them. Um, and because uh, uh, I had a relationship dissolve and I needed to hardcore downsize, uh, these girls went to uh, um, 
the farm that they'd been at. She had a, a goat herd at the time and it worked out really well and, and everything, uh, you know, was really well. And the goats have, I mean, the llamas have been there for um, about almost six years. And um, when she had the goat farm, there really was no, uh, no issues. They were very well taken care of. I got to see them on a regular basis. Um, anytime I was in town, I would get to go see them and they, they always looked really good. Um, she sold her goat herd and got into cattle and the cows um, would bully the llamas off of the feed. And um, apparently this, this last winter was the worst. There was also an issue with being able to get somebody to come shear them. Uh, so I kind of wanna uh, talk about that and uh, what we need to think about when we bring animals onto our property. Um, I'm extremely grateful that she called me and uh, asked me to come get these animals, that, that, that it was no longer a good environment for them because the cattle were not letting them eat, eat the hay. Um, uh, you know, I, I, this lady has always taken really good care of her animals, so I don't uh, hold any malicious thought towards that. It's, you know, it's just making sure that you have the right type of guardian animal um, with your herd. And llamas are wonderful guardian animals, but they, they can be bullied and they can be bullied by cattle. So that I would, would say if you have cows, don't have llamas. Maybe have donkeys or guardian dogs or something like that that, that can defend themselves from uh, that type of, of bullying and still continue to get access to food. Um, you know, llamas are really great with sheep and goats and that kind of stuff because they get to kind of rule the roost and don't have to um, fight for food. Um, so, a couple of things that I think if you decide to get llamas um, that you really need to take an account for is that they need to be sheared um, every other year unless you have uh, so I guess there's three types of breeding of llamas. You have your pack llamas, which will naturally shed their fiber. You have fiber llamas, which have been bred to not shed that fiber so that it can be sheared and used as fiber. And then you have meat llamas that are basically bred for meat. Um, these girls are, uh, Gracie's a little bit more of a pack llama. She will start shedding her fiber, but won't shed at all. Uh, because I think she's probably been crossbred um, and and Allegra won't shed at all. So they've had seven years of fiber growing on their bodies, um, which is just extremely unhealthy. Their skin looked to be uh, in really good condition. There were no funguses. There was not anything like that. Um, you know, so basically it just gets really heavy and really hot. Uh, as we were shearing them, they had a lot of heat on their body, so they were already putting off a lot of heat. Uh, dark llamas need to be sheared more often than your light-colored llamas, again, because of the heat situation. So, you know, if you... It is really difficult, and I have actually found this in my own situation, which is why I have shears and why I've learned to shear the animals that I own is because it's really hard to get a shearer to come to your house if you only have two animals or you know a small herd because they make the most money um, on the larger herds. So it's, it's better for their time and energy to focus on larger herds versus smaller herds. So um, if you're going to have a llama or a few animals that need to be sheared, you probably should invest in shears and invest in the education and learning how to shear them. Um, the first time that we sheared these llamas where they had five years worth of fiber on them uh, when I first got them um, back in 2014, um, they uh, were wild and we, they would not just stand there and let us shear them. This time, I think they understood and they remembered how good that felt. <laughs> and so when it came to shearing, 
they just stood there and and uh, I just sheared them there was no spitting no kicking no anything uh, I did try to video as much of it I have not gone back and look at that footage yet um, to see exactly what you guys got to saw but I hope I hope that there was uh, a lot of good video in that um, footage that I got I just set the GoPro up and we got to work uh, getting these girls taken care of um, the other thing is is they do need their you know yearly vaccinations and they do need to be wormed um, we wormed these guys with ivermectin and then we gave them their yearly shot and again they just stood there and let us do it um, I had done some halter training with these girls when I first got them and um, when we were catching them uh, and they're, they've always been extremely difficult to catch because again they have not had a lot of handling um, I think once Gracie realized who I was she let me put my arm around her neck and I told her nose and she dove her nose into the halter I think they were just ready they were ready to go um, and they loaded up into the the trailer just fine and and rode very well uh, they just laid down and and when we got to where we were going I was able to open the door and then had to force them to get up to, to move out of the trailer so that all went as as best as it possibly could uh, I was very emotional about it so I was being very careful about what I've said uh, what I was saying while I was shearing and we were just trying to evaluate their condition to make some decisions on their care for, from here going out um, it uh, I checked their teeth and their teeth looked fine um, you know sometimes uh, the they have some lower teeth and some upper teeth that you do need to cut and if you don't um, cut them um, that could uh, affect their eating where it starts stabbing into the lower upper gums and then they can't um, chew their food um, because it's very painful these girls once we got them sheared and put them out on the pasture dove into the hay and were eating just fine so I don't think that that is is a problem with them um, you know I did check them you know those teeth could be sawed off and and possibly I'll pick up one of those uh, teeth saws and and take care of that whenever I'm there on Tuesday um, but they were they were eating with no problems so I do think that their condition is from lack of access to food and not their teeth or their health or anything like that um, I did get to check their poop and it uh, it looked pretty healthy it looked like healthy poop so no diarrhea no anything like that again makes me think it's just lack of access to food and not uh, anything um, medical uh, so we talked about shearing you do need to trim their feet also uh, they don't like it Gracie just laid down and refused to let me trim her feet Allegra just stood there and let me trim all of her feet just fine Gracie is our dominant alpha out of the two and and Allegra is much easier to handle and and sweeter and all of those things so um, right now the thought is that Gracie's going to come here and Allegra is gonna stay at Jennifer's um, uh, Jennifer does um, fiber stuff she's very interested in the fiber so she will be shearing and spinning and, and making things out of the fiber she also has a small sheep herd mix with two young butcher cows um, in that group um, but she was able is very easy to her to um, uh, separate the cows if that becomes an issue um, uh, Jennifer is paramedic so we were able to kind of you know she's not a vet <laughs> but she is paramedic in the medical field so we were able to you know kind of assess them with that medical eye um, looking at them and and I feel very comfortable that they are going to recover with you know access to to good quality hay and um, you know now that they've been wormed and they've gotten their shots and stuff uh, there shouldn't be any reason but we will be keeping a very close eye on them to make sure that they are gaining weight from this point on and if they appear to not be gaining weight with the access to the food then we will definitely get a vet in to give them a good um, once over 
Uh, so things that you really need to think of when you are getting animals is are you going to be able to have somebody to shear or are you willing to shear them yourself? Um, and if you know you just you've got to figure that out and if you're not then you shouldn't have animals that you need to shear on your property. Um, you know there is a minimal amount of, of vet care with the or health care with these guys that you have to give them that you know they are a, a fairly easy animal to keep um, they're very respectful of fences um, you know so you know that's something you've got to have your uh, some fencing in you've you know got to have access to water which they did that was not an issue um, and then you've got to have food they absolutely love brush and that kind of stuff so um, you know, Gracie being here and having the brush and the grass and that kind of stuff, uh, I think will, will make her very happy. And one thing that I need to focus on now is getting an area fenced in um, that she will be able to be in. And she will not be alone. Um, I, I do have some baby goats that are coming in probably August and, and I will be starting my goat herd um, and then I will also be having some sheep come in. So uh, something that I, that I will be focusing on here um, uh, in the very near future is that fencing. Until then, she gets to stay at Jennifer's house and um, be cared for. Um, you know, the thing that I do know is that um, I've learned to not harshly judge animal environments or the care that animals will let's just say this situation <laughs> um, because if you've been involved in animals um, things can happen this did go on longer than it should have um, and These girls should have been separated from the cows and um, either rehomed or uh, something else should have happened. Um, the agreement that her and I had was that they would get to come back to me. I was not ready because of the property. I didn't have property yet. I was selling one farm and buying here in Idaho. Uh, so I am just extremely grateful that I now have them back and um, that the rest of their lives get to be lived out in a, um, a very loving, caring environment. Um, but I do think that it needs to be acknowledged that when you realize an animal's not uh, working for your situation it doesn't make you a bad person to say these animals aren't working and I need to get rid of them and then doing that as soon as you can uh, I don't think I'm gonna talk much else about that I think I'm just going to focus on going forward with these animals and uh, I was extremely excited about picking them up and very shocked um, at the condition that they were in so I do have a lot of emotional processing to uh, go through, I think. Um, and so I think that's how I'm, I'm going to look at this. And a uh, lesson learned for me is um, when I have to get rid of animals to maybe make better decisions on that. I, I was uh, being selfish because I really wanted these girls back. So um, maybe I made some other decisions that I, I probably shouldn't have, but it is what it is. And I think that they are going to recover just fine. And um, I think I'm just gonna kind of leave it at that. And I'm sure there'll be a lot of editing of this. <laughs> um, but yeah, in an emotional couple of days.